This guy's at the free throw line and he's getting booed. It's an ex-player. And yeah, boo, I don't want you to, you know, make the free throw, right? Greg Popovich, the Spurs coach, goes to the PA announcer, grabs the mic and tells the fans, hey guys, settle down. Stop booing. This isn't who we are. Who the f*** are you? I, I mean, can you imagine Greg Popovich's <laughs> old bag making $16 million for doing shit? Probably because you're telling me I'm a fan paying an arm and a leg and I see an ex-player, I'm booing them and you're telling me to shut up. Are you out of your mind, bro? What's up, everybody? Back at it again. Talking Trash Podcast, Episode 5. Amesy, plug your ears. Oh, Jeez. I got a lot of comments that uh, you get like a couple two of, honks out of those. Things. I don't know, man. It's it's, it's a big one. It's yeah, we got to figure this out. I, I think that guy Jeff from Section One Hundred Two has a, a legit one. I we, think the big ones is the move. Oh man, how you doing, Amesy? Well, Good. well, I know how you've been doing. You've been a very yeah. bad, bad boy, yeah. and we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna get to it because a lot of people have been talking about it on social media. You've been a very bad boy, and um, I'm worried for Christmas as we get closer because I think you're gonna get couple, some coal. Couple coals. Couple coals. Couple coals. Uh, yeah, I, I think we're going to get there. But first and foremost, big shout out to episode five. We already got our first sponsor, AMZ Club 93, uh, you know, local guys. I know, you know, th these guys are the fabric of hockey in Danbury. If you want to talk a little bit about the, the boys over there. Episode five, Nicholas Lidstrom. Um, yeah, shout out to Club 93, Ken and the boys. Um, they got a, it's a little nonprofit that they got and it's, um, essentially just kind of promoting, you know, playing the sport of hockey. And these guys goal is to play hockey till the age of 93. So, um, I don't know if I'll be able to play that long considering the way that I play. I think I'll probably be suspended or something. Uh, Ken and them, they're, they're the best. Great guys, um, great supporters and everything we're doing. And uh, just shout out to Club 93. Yeah, big shout out Club 93. We're going to put a link in uh, the bios and on the episode so you guys could check them out and give them support. Like I said, I mean, look at this new quasi set we're getting It's getting here. there. It's, it's getting Club 93 is a big help. It's I mean, look there. at this. We look got a... You know, we're building. We're building, people. It's yeah. episode five. We're already, you know, moving on up in the world, man. Moving and, on uh, up. Moving on up. <laughs> so, yeah, last week's episode, episode four, Wingnuts Revenge, we got so much feedback. Probably the most feedback we've gotten from the fans so far about, you know, obviously the incident with Brad Wingfield, Josh Elzinger, um... 18 years ago, it, it was crazy, crazy episode. And I have a weird, like I said, I have a weird feeling we may not be done with those two. I agree. Yeah, I think there might be something. I, I, uh, I, you know, we put up on, you know, and listen, obviously, like, subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. If you watch on YouTube, we have a lot of the pictures and videos that go along with it, which is cool. Um, and one thing we put up, which was pretty funny, was a. Uh, it said, why can't we be friends? It was a picture of Brad and Josh. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll mend that fence one day. Maybe. I'd like to see Did it. Did you see the the fake Josh Elzinger on I Instagram? I was laughing so hard because I looked him up on Instagram. I think I sent him to you. And in his profile, it said, not the guy who <laughs> broke Brad Winfield's leg. And I seen he's also from Victoria Island in BC oh where God. you know me and Wing Winger are obviously from BC. So it's kind of funny. I'm sure he gets harassed Dude, uh, being from when our you neck sent, of the woods. When you sent me his profile, his name is Josh Elzinger. And, yeah. and it first thing, Hilarious. not in caps, yeah. not the Josh who... <laughs> <laughs> who broke Brad Wingfield's Great. leg. We got to find that guy. That's that's one of the funniest things I've seen Love in a while. Yeah. And staying on the Brad Wingfield, the, probably the most legendary damn bear trasher ever, we got to shout out Winger. Winger. I mean, we talked about this a few episodes back on how the tough guys are the guys you build not only a team around, but now in his second career, he just in the Pacific Junior Hockey League. That's, my, okay? that's the league that I played in, too. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Big junior hockey league right. over there. Gibson's British Columbia, September 2024. Our man Brad Wingfield is the GM. I can't believe I'm saying this. The GM and the head coach of the uh, Coastal Tsunamis. That is a great place to play, too. Great place Dude, to play. Dude, I saw their jerseys. I'm, first of all, I'm so happy for Winger. I mean, again, it's a guy you build your team around, literally, as a player, yeah. and now as a coach and GM. And it's funny because, you know, I was a GM, now he's a GM, and I, I'm just so proud of him. And, and they unveiled their uniforms the other day. They had a sold-out crowd for— wow. 
I mean, I didn't know junior hockey was like it's, that. It's a good community out there too, and and they love hockey and stuff like that. So who'd you um, play for in the, in the PGHL? I played PJHL. PJHL, yeah. So it's a junior A league in BC. They uh, and uh, I played for the Ridge Meadows Flames. Ridge Meadows, okay, which is my hometown where I, I grew up watching them since I was a kid. Um, well, we all let, the way up, and then I and then my last season I got traded to Abbotsford Pilots in a blockbuster trade for the top D men in the league, straight well, listen, across. Well, listen. It's your hometown. I don't, I don't want to tread on territory here, but we will, at some point next year, be going to a Tsunamis game. Definitely. They yeah. are the bad boys of the PJHL. 100%. And I'm I'm pumped. It'll be good. You get back to your home, you know, your home area, yeah, province. Cool. You call it province, right? Province, yeah. Province. I'm learning more about Canadian culture, man, and yeah. just everything, man. And uh, God bless Tim Horton. And yeah, so big shout out to Brad Wingfield. I'm so, so proud of him and uh, seeing him out there. They had over a thousand people just to unveil the jerseys and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, so it's a good good community. That looks there, like that it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. So we're going to have to go on the road next season. Shout out Coastal Tsunamis, Gibson's PC, uh, BC, excuse me. And uh, also last week, we got a lot of comments about our video game talk. Yeah. Getting a lot of challenges. We mentioned my boy Manny Gonzalez, um, Emmanuel Gonzalez, excuse me, and his son Mikey um, starting a Twitch account. Nice. I was baffled what Twitch was. I, I started to get a lot of heat after this episode, <laughs> how I didn't know what Twitch was, but the challenge is out, 2v2, um, and we're going to have to have them down here. And uh, to we, loose, loosen my thumbs again. Or, listen, you, we know? get, you and I both, we get chirped. It's pretty 50-50. We get chirped a lot on social media, and I think instead of— Dude, I, I think I take the cake at this point. Like, no, no, this I, week, I think I take I, the cake. I, oh, we're going to get there. We're <laughs> going to get there. But I get chirped, too, and I think, you know— I've always been like, let's just, you know, invite these trolls to the gym and spar or something. But you know yeah, what? Yeah, they don't, they don't want that. No, they don't, don't want the smoke. Don't so want that. why don't we just, we peace video games. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think we challenge yeah. people. Yeah. All the haters and the chirpers will, any game you want, yeah. me and AMZ will uh, take you guys out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I prefer, player bond, I prefer the boxing ring, but I, I'm okay with some video games. Well, we'll some you know, like we said, it's, it's 2023 and we world's, have to look, gone we soft. have to look to a different way. Yeah, I think it. video games is a little a, too much. Too much emotion involved in a box. Oh yeah, it's a, little, it's a little too intense for for some people. I think so, yeah. definitely. Scary, well, listen, scary, scary. Listen, let's cut to the chase here, because you, as I've mentioned, were a very bad boy this past weekend. Yeah. Literally, figuratively, you were the honorary. You were the first ever inaugural Bad Boys <laughs> Club legacy athlete I made yes, of you last thank year. Thank you, I appreciate that. And you were definitely carrying that legacy and. Um, you know, before we do anything, I, I thank you, Club 93, for our set. I'm going to have to put our serious lighting on. Oh, there it is. There's I the like red light. That is elite. We, um, we have to get a little serious here. Daniel Amesbury, I uh, wasn't at the Hattricks game last weekend. Unfortunately, holiday season, it's crazy. I'm running around nuts. And um, I get a call from you, like, at 8 o'clock, 8.30 at night, and I'm like, what is this guy calling from the bench or something? Why is he calling me? I couldn't pick up, and I got a text, and it was simply like, <laughs> kicked out again. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in trouble here. You didn't say I'm in trouble here, but I just put two and two together that you did something bad. So, allegedly, what happened, Daniel Amesbury, this past weekend yeah. at the Danbury Arena? I mean, yeah, obviously everybody knows I'm on a pretty tight leash, um, just the way it is, I guess, at this point. Um, but, yeah, it was just... Uh, I was back checking, kind of got beat on a play. Um, as the play was finishing, the the player made a pass. He was kind of behind the goal line, and then I went to finish my check because obviously, like, he can still go to the net at that point. So it's, you know, you finish your check, you take your guy out of the play. That's a pretty standard hockey play. Um, but just the way the collision happened, he kind of turned. Like, obviously, you want to take a hit shoulder to shoulder, but he kind of last second turned – his head towards the glass and it just, you know, it just ended up being not the most ideal collision. Um, the way that he went into the glass, um, was a little sketchy. Um, I feel really bad that it turned out the way it did after cause he did get hurt. Yeah. Um, he hit his head into the glass and stuff, but, uh, but yeah, that's basically what happened. And, you know, we see this stuff happening time and time again in, in all the way from the NHL down, like Torch was talking about it the other day, just, um, at the end of the day, like, when I play hockey, I'm, I know, like, I'm swimming with the Sharks. I'm always ready to get hit. I'm always protecting myself. 
Um, but a lot of guys nowadays are just comfortable when they're playing. They're not, they're not bracing themselves. They're just, they're not even expecting to get hit lots of the time. They're like, well, if I, if I make this pass, this guy's not going to hit me or, or whatever. And, and they just, you know, a lot of guys just aren't prepared to get hit. And I think that that was a big contributor to how this collision ended. Um, I don't think it was, uh, I don't think it was like there was no bad intentions. I, like I said, I feel bad that it ended the way it did, but I just think it was just an awkward collision and the way he turned towards the glass last second. I think he was scared when he seen me coming. He's like, oh, no. And he just kind of ejected last minute and tried to turn out of it. And I caught him. And then as I was turning, he kind of hit his head in the glass. So um, it was really unfortunate the way it happened. And I wish him a uh, speedy recovery. And I hope he's all good. Um, it's never something that you want to be involved with or see in the game at all. It, it makes me sick to my stomach to, to see stuff like that happen. But um, at the end of the day, it's hockey. Uh, we go out there knowing what the risks are. Um, obviously, playing the role that I'm playing, like I'm fighting. I'm literally, I sign up for this. I know I could die literally mm -hmm. fighting. You get hit, you get punched, you hit your head on the ice, you can die. Like that's a thing that everybody knows about, especially the guys that are fighting. I know that I signed up for that. Um, it's just kind of like, we're going to war out there. Don't want that to happen with anybody. It's obviously, um, it's obviously, you know, we want everybody to leave the game safe and, and healthy, but unfortunately sometimes guys get hurt and there's some awkward collisions and stuff like that. We've seen it in the NHL recently. Um, Torts talked about it. Um, I was talking to a couple guys that are actively playing in the NHL right now that kind of, I sent them the hit. Um, they were very surprised at, at kind of my discipline that I got from it. And they kind of, they just said, you know, that's just the unfortunate side effect of the game and where it's going. So, um, a lot of guys just not preparing themselves to be hit and just not playing with, um, not not realizing like you're out there in a war and you're swimming with the sharks and and uh, you got to know who's on the ice and you got to know that guys are willing to finish their checks and and you got to protect yourself. So, well, I you know one thing I've always respected about you is you're very humble, you're very respectful, and you do things the right way. I've been around a lot of things in my life, sports outside of sports, and I know the difference between a um, person that means harm and someone who doesn't. And one thing I can say is you've never, look, you, so let me, let me, let me cut to the chase. I really appreciate you, you know, because fans wanted to know. Everyone was hitting us up after the game. We want to know what Ames thinks about this. I'm glad you're in a position where you have to not, you know, listen, we're authentic guys. You walk a line a little bit because you're playing. I'm not going to walk that line. I think what happened to you is absolutely ridiculous, and you can't say it, and you haven't even said it privately to me. You've always taken responsibility. Um, I know the difference between a guy that doesn't take responsibility, makes excuses. You've never make excuses. And one thing about me is I call it how it is. I don't care. I've gone to war with family members. I don't care if your family not. I call what I think is right and wrong. And last year there was a couple times you got suspended where I said to you, a little late, you know what I mean? Elbow got up a little bit. I'm not, I'm always going to defend you, but I, I'm not going to just yes you to death. And if I think you were wrong with something, I'd be the first to tell you. And then you sent me that video from the other night. And I'll be honest with you. I expected, I expected a, a, a 18 wheel collision. You, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I know how you can hit. Yeah. I was expecting the worst. And, um, you know, most guys that get thrown out, they kind of downplay things anyway. So I'm like, let me look at it with a fresh eyes and see what this guy, this nut diamond hands did here. You sent me the video and we're going to put it up. And I saw the hit and I texted you. I'm like, okay, where's the hit where you got suspended? I thought you sent me the wrong video. Yeah, I thought yeah. you, it was just like a back checking. You weren't the only person that said no, that. No, so yeah. you sent me the video. People were tagging me and I'm looking at it and I'm like, Oh, Ames, you sent me the wrong video. Where's the hit? Yeah. Where's the suspension hit? He's like, that's it. Yeah. And I'm looking at this hit. And again, here's the thing, man. I've created leagues before. I know you can't, like, I'm a pro player guy. I'm a bad boy guy. But I call it how it is. And there has to be a balance. You, you can't, as much as I love the tough guys, you can't guys, you know, and you're not like that. You can't go out crazy. And the fact that you got suspended 18 games. That's a third of the season. Let me say that again. 18 games. And I, I don't like to get emotional because I'm not that type of guy. I'm not looking for clicks. I'm not looking for, 
you know, all this clout these young weirdos are doing. But I was so upset and I saved it for today because I'm like, you mean to tell me the heart and soul of this Danbury team is suspended 18 games for that? Now, if you did something wrong, I'd, I'd look you in your eye and I'd say, Ames, you know, it is what it is. You got a target on your back. You've been running around. It happens. I'd be the first to tell you. And I've told you in the past that there, I wouldn't say it was a dirty hit. It's a late hit. But that was that was crazy. That was yeah. absolutely crazy. I know you can't say much. And again, you're that type of respectful guy. Even in private on the way here, you didn't say anything bad about anybody. You never badmouth the league. You don't badmouth anybody. But you know what? I'm sick and tired of being humble with this stuff. This is crazy. Hockey, make a decision. Are we are we hitting or are we not hitting? Like like yeah. and you hit it on the head. When I started playing hockey in the mid 90s at the Brewster Ice Arena, in-house hockey, you know what the first drill was? How to take a hit. Yeah. And we weren't even allowed to hit at the time. Yeah. How to take a hit. I think hockey is doing a major disservice. Hockey in general, not just the NHL, hockey in general. You know, my dad always said I, one of his famous quotes is you can't be half pregnant, right? You are or you're not. Hockey, figure out what it is. Is fighting okay? Is hitting okay? Or just take it out. Because what's happening is you just said it. These young kids are coming up. No one's hitting. And that's, you know, whatever. They swing their purse on the four track. Like they're, nobody's used to getting hit regularly. I'm watching the Devils game. I'm a Devils fan. And John Tortorella, coach of the Flyers. I'm watching that game where Quinn Hughes, a defenseman, and I don't want to see my guy on the team get hurt. But he's lollygagging into the boards, and you get hit. Yeah. You got to be prepared. Yeah. That, that's like driving. These guys are driving a car, not even looking at the red light, not just looking at the stop sign, just cruise. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Hockey yeah. needs to decide what it wants to do. Yeah. I've been saying this for years. I've been saying this, you know, again, after we lost to Trash in 06, I didn't watch another hockey game for 13, 14 years. I came back, and I'm like, hockey's in a weird spot where what it wants to be. Fighting and hitting is okay for this guy, but it's not for that guy. Yeah. And look, listen, you hit it on the head. Nobody wants to see anyone get hurt. Nobody. Um, but this, I, like, it drives me crazy, man. And it's been driving me nuts since you sent me that video. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's, like, frustrating about it for me. You know, another thing is, like, and not saying this situation at all because, like, the kid was genuinely hurt, obviously. But a lot of times they base whatever penalties you get on what the outcome was if somebody got hurt. Um, like, I don't know if you remember last year when I got cross-checked in the back of the head. Yeah, and I it remember. Was, it was literally the most violent, savage thing. It was like Marty McSorley, like, cr slashing Brashear in the head. Like, yeah. it was bad, like, right in the back of the head. And I still have an injury from that. Like, I still feel that every mm. day. Like, my neck's fucked. But I play through it. Like, yeah. I, obviously, like, I'm just not the kind of guy where... And I've still been playing through that injury that happened last year. If I would have stayed in the on the ground or on the ice when that happened, maybe they would have called something, but there was no suspension on the play. So for me to see something like that, which happened to me, and obviously nobody's going to protect me in this league as far as obviously my teammates will, but as far as, uh, you know, suspensions and stuff like that. But I know if I did that, it would have been like, uh, it was, it was, I don't even know what to say about it because it was literally the worst cross check I've ever seen in a video. And that happened to me last year. It was a five minute penalty, no suspension. So to see me getting 18 games for this, it's, you know, without saying too much about it, it's just, um, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just, well, it's just kind of, uh, it, it's it, just, it is what it is, but it's it, just kind of, uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's society in general, but hockey needs to decide what are we doing here? Because yeah. you know what? Again, no one wants to see him when he get hurt. We understand times are different, but make a decision. Yeah. Just outlaw hitting. Yeah. I would hate hockey at that point, yeah. but just do it for the players because yeah. you're doing them a disservice yeah. because they're cruising down. They're taking the driver's test now, and they're not even looking at the stop sign. It's just yeah. if I get hit by a truck, oh, poor me. Yeah. And, and again, we wish him, you know, this Motor City team, it yeah. was. We yeah. wish him the best recovery, but yeah. you know what? I swear to you, I would not just yes you to death. If, if you yeah. did something wrong, I'd be like, yo, you messed up. But this is ridiculous. And, and, and I'm telling you, it, it's, uh, I don't know, Amesy. You know what? Danbury's known as a hard-nosed place. Maybe the federal, is it a prospect hockey league? Federal, federal Maybe prospect. the federal league is not a league for Danbury. And yeah. let me tell you something. I've been out the game for a while, but I got sources. Yeah. And I know a lot of people like us, and they reach out to me. And I never reveal names and stuff, but let me tell you, there's a lot of people that think it's it's a lot of BS, and yeah. and and frankly, 
everyone's a little handcuffed, and I yeah. understand. But it's 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 right is right, wrong is wrong. I mean, if they gave you a few games, it still would have been too many. Yeah. But whatever, I understand yeah. you got to protect the players, yeah, and you yeah. got to say, but eighteen games. Yeah, it's just, and, and you know what? Another frustrating thing is it was based upon they're saying repeat offender. My last instance for a hit that they're saying. They're calling it intent to injure. They said it was my hit from last year. I think it was Yates. It was 11 months ago. So it was around this time last year that I hit Yates. And then obviously I finished the rest of the season and didn't have any, like, whatever repeat offender issues. But the thing is, like, earlier in the season I got suspended for, you know, one-man fight kind of things that had happened, like with Jasso and all that. And my suspension was one game. So it's like, well, if they're basing, if that's their rule and they're saying. How do you jump from yeah, one well, to how two come games that to one, How come that one wasn't 18 if you're basing it on, on a repeat offender? Like, I don't understand how I've already had that suspension for one or two games and now we're all of a sudden, no, oh, actually we're going to revert back to the 12-month thing. So I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm at the point now where I just, you know, like you said, I think that maybe – you know, I don't know. Maybe Danbury isn't built listen, for listen, this, this league. Uh, listen, let me tell you something. I enjoy. I will always support any hockey that's in Danbury because we built this, and I say that humbly. I will always support. I will always support the fans. I will always support the boys. Everyone, everyone, good, bad, or indifferent. But you know what? If that's the type of stuff that's going to be called, and you know yeah. what's funny? Last episode we were understanding. Ref, we were giving referees, and we were understanding giving yeah, yeah. people. But if that's what's going to be, I don't even, and, and you're my brother, yeah. I don't even want to go to a game. Why, yeah. why am I, like, I got, my time is limited. Yeah. yeah. Humbly. Yeah. And I'm going to go to a game where it could be you, it could be ZP, it could be anybody on the yeah. team is going to hit like that and they're thrown out. Why, why yeah. do I want to go to a game? Yeah. You know, honestly, it kind of makes me think like maybe we need like a XHL or something like Listen, that. Listen. I'm just saying, you know what? <laughs> if this is going to continue to happen, you know me. Do we start our own league? I mean, I'm not saying we're yeah. going around and you guys are playing with chainsaws or something, enough, but this think, is crazy, bro. I think there's enough fans out there that are sick of it. I think there's enough teams out there that are sick of it, and I don't think it And you know what's funny? It. You said it, and we talked about it. We're, we don't reveal names on this side, but same thing with me. There are players, non Tough guy players yeah. that have reached out to us yeah. together, NHL, individually. NH, NHL players. And they're like, you know? is this for real? Without naming any names, because I just don't want to drag anyone no, into this. No, we don't, but, yeah. You know, like, I've, like I said, I've talked to a handful of guys that play in the NHL. There's guys that are, I've heard about guys' responses that currently are in the NHL yeah. that are skilled guys. Uh, I've talked to guys that are, are retired from the NHL, and it's the same review from everybody. We've talked to referees. We've talked to everybody. Yeah. So It's, it's crazy. It's, it's uh, crazy. And, yeah. and I understand because I've headed up leagues, mm -hmm. not just teams. So I get that there's a balance and you got to protect. There's a big picture to it. But I, I honestly, I don't care. I mean, I got, they can't punish me. I don't give a shit. The league is out of line. And uh, frankly, and we're, we don't even have to get into this, but you can't even appeal it. And I know why you can't appeal it. And I'm, we're not going to get into it here, but that alone just shows you how, how it's BS to me. But I believe that the organization is going to take care of you and do the right thing. And, and I sure hope so. I mean, I have no – look, I got no say. I mean, I was doing things 20 years ago. I don't have any say in what goes on in Danbury. I know people think, but I don't. I always support, but I will say I really hope the organization does the right thing. But um, I know they will because it's Danbury Hockey, and Danbury always does the right thing. The fans, the ownership, the GMs, but I think it's ridiculous. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, I predict, and I hope I'm wrong, within two years there's going to be a, a major injury in the NHL or AHL, like a paralyzation type yeah, of thing. yeah. yeah. And it's going to be someone under the age of 23 years old. Yeah. And I hope I'm wrong because I like to be right. But I, I, this is an instance I hope I'm You don't very, want that to I happen. I hope, yeah. I pray to God I'm wrong. Yeah. And I'm not trying to throw it in the atmosphere. But the way things are going, I've seen more in the past season or two in all levels of hockey, guys getting hurt into the boards because they're not preparing to get hit. That's and, a fact. And added, adding to this whole entire thing is this world has gotten so sensitive to everything. It's so it's like 10, 20, whatever years ago, the people weren't sensitive. People weren't like complete pussies. I'm sorry. Yeah. Pardon my French. It's true. But people have gotten so sensitive that when they see somebody... Yeah, we're, it's it's a contact sport. People get hurt. I get like, 
Yeah, as if as if I've never been hit like that. Like yeah. people get hurt. Like back in the Central League days, you get elbowed in that. You know what that guy would have done when he seen me coming? Mm. Instead of cowering and turning the other way and, and yeah. putting his head in the he glass, stuck his he would have fucking right stepped his elbow in my face. Of and you know what? I'd respect that. I'd be okay with that. But at, but besides that, it's the fans are getting soft. The, it's not even just the fans; just people in general are just hypersensitive when one little thing happens and it's and it ripples and it grows and it's and it's not just sports it's everything it's, in it's, society s- sports is just a reflection of society yeah and it's and, sad. and it's it is sad and you know what again i don't want to sit up here i don't want us we're in our 30s right i'm pushing i'm a few years away from the big 40 yeah. i'm not trying to come off as the guys that used to annoy me when i was young yeah. talking about the differences of, of generations but I'm telling you, things are going so south. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty hard not to notice. And it's hard I, I not mean, to I feel like, look, every generation, there's yeah. a gap between, you know, things. I feel like our generation and the one below us, there's just such a huge divide that it's, yeah. it's crazy. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I was hyped up when you showed me that to the point where I thought you sent me the wrong video. <laughs> when I'm like, this is what? That's the same reaction I've gotten from and every a, NHL guy and, I've and again, about And it. again, and again. I want the Federal Hockey League. I want all hockey to prosper. Yeah. Hockey's a dear thing to my heart. But you know what, hockey? Figure out what your identity is. You can't yeah. sit there and promote hitting, fighting this, and then you 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 can't pick and choose. Yeah. So you know what? Figure it out. Um, you know, listen, I, 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 I hope, you know, listen, this is not going to stop us. It's not going to stop you. You know I always got your back no matter what. We're going to figure this thing out. And... Um, you know what? I, you know what, Amesy? I was gonna save this segment to later, but I'm a little hopped up right now, right now that I'm time. ready for two in the box. Let's do it. I want to see it. So two in you the want box. Me to set the timer. No, I, I got, I got it here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch myself because this could be a double minor, but I'm gonna make sure that I. I <laughs> you gotta um, go four minutes. I, I what about I'm, a major. No, nah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick it to two minutes in the All box. Right. And as you know, a few episodes ago, we did two minutes in the box, um, where we ran about stuff that that's uh, annoying us. So without further ado, hopefully it works. As soon as you, as soon as you let that air horn go, I'm gonna go into kind of just backing off what we were just talking about here, mm-hmm. just how soft things have gotten. So if you'd like, set, right. set my set my minor up. Here we go. <laughs> kind of. All right. Learned. All right. All right. Listen. I, again, I'm not trying to sit here and act like I'm 80 years old and hate the way the world is today. No one adjusts in life more than me, but life has gotten so soft. And I'm going to tell you, sports, okay? Let's get off hockey for a minute. We are in what I call the jersey swap generation, okay? These are guys making millions and millions of dollars, and I'm not trying to be a hater, okay? God bless these guys, okay? I'm happy for them. But if I'm, which I've had experience as a owner slash GM, if I'm paying, if I'm an owner of the NFL, okay, and I'm a Raiders fan, but if, if, if I'm paying guys millions of dollars and my team just got the dog shit kicked out of them, and the minute the clock goes to triple zero, the game's over, and I see any of my guys at, at, at the 50-yard line swapping jerseys, bro, you're out. I don't care what anybody says. I get it. Uh, you know, these guys are human beings. I don't care. I come from the generation where I hated my opponent. And that doesn't mean the minute the, the, the game is over, it's over. We don't have beef. You want to swap jerseys, swap them in the back. Don't disrespect me as an owner or GM. I'm paying good hard-earned money. And I know owners aren't allowed to have gripes because they're billionaires and stuff. But you know what? They earn the money one way or the other. People could believe what they want. And I'm paying you $100 million contract or whatever the frig these guys are making, and you're swapping a jersey with a guy that just kicked the shit out of us, bro, I'd wave him on the spot. I know my dad would do the same thing. Take that shit outside. And to the fans, I'm paying an arm and a leg to go watch you. My team sucks. I'm wearing your jersey. And, bro, I'm watching you get the shit kicked out of you and you're swapping jersey. Yo, drives me absolutely crazy, okay? Another thing, NBA, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, bro, I don't want to hear these sob stories of where these guys come from and this and that. I saw LeBron, or was it Russell Westbrook, one of these guys, they're both guilty of it, stopped the game and went to security and got a fan kicked out of the game because he was getting heckled. Are you out of your mind? You talk about soft. It's our generation that's like letting this shit happen too. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. 
I used to go to Knicks game when Michael Jordan came to the Garden. And the things that Michael Jordan would hear from the New York fans and from all of us like in that building, could you imagine Michael Jordan, old school, killer, Shaquille O'Neal, could you imagine him at the free throw line, timeout, go gets a security guard, snitches, rats, and gets a guy kicked out? Yo, I saw this, I lost my mind. Again, you guys are so soft. And again, respect you guys as players. I'm sure off the court, you guys are great guys. But you know what? Stop that. These guys have become so entitled, bro. It makes me sick. And it trickles down to everything else in society. It drives me crazy. And listen, I'm, 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 I'm rolling here. Last thing. This isn't even a young guy. You know who Greg Popovich is? The coach of the San Antonio yeah. Spurs? This old bag? The other day... Coach of the Spurs, legendary coach, don't get me wrong, okay? This guy's like 100 years old, all right? Uh, they're playing the Clippers. Now, Kawhi Leonard, uh, you know, a big-time basketball player, used to play for the Spurs. You know, like all these basketball guys, they all leave, go to different teams. So now he's on a visiting team, the L.A. Clippers. He's at the free throw line. Ames, you and I, we grow up. Listen, if you're on my team, I root for you, whether you're good or not. The minute you're off my team, dude, it's over. I'm not your fan anymore. I don't care, okay? Okay. The San Antonio fans are booing Kawhi Leonard, okay? Who makes 40, excuse me, 42 point something million <laughs> dollars, okay? Who's always hurt, by the way. This guy's at the free throw line and he's getting booed. It's an ex-player. And yeah, boo, I don't want you to, you know, make the free throw, right? Greg Popovich, the Spurs coach, goes to the PA announcer, grabs the mic and tells the fans, hey guys, settle down, stop booing. This isn't who we are. Who the f are you? I, I mean, can you imagine Greg Popovich's <laughs> old bag making $16 million for doing shit probably? Excuse my language, by the way. I know I'm going to hear about that from my mom. Oh, my God. You're telling me I'm a fan paying an arm and a leg and I see an ex-player, I'm booing him, and you're telling me to shut up? Are you out of your mind, bro? Yo, people have gone totally crazy, and it's sad. It really is sad. And, and let me tell you something. Could you imagine, like, at a trasher game, like Billy yeah. going to the section one, two? Hey, guys. Call Stop booing. Yeah. There'd be a riot. Yeah. <laughs> it trickles down. I think I went over two minutes, but I don't care, man. That is absolutely insane. Nice. Listen, stop swapping jerseys with your opponent in public. It's a spit in the face to GMs and owners. I don't fans care what you guys say. especially. I feel like fans. It's most disrespectful to the Bro, fans. Bro, don't too. disrespect the fans like, oh, yeah, buddy, buddy, dapping up and all this bullshit. Dude, crazy. And, and again, stop snitching on fans. You get heckled, deal with. You guys are making... If that's really, if that's how weak you are mentally, you you, you got a serious problem, man. Yeah. And you're probably going to lose all that money because if you're that sensitive... Oh, yeah. You're going to get walked on. Dude, Michael Jordan, I used to... I don't even want to tell you things people used to say to him at the Garden, bro. And he, he, you know what he did in response? He dropped 50 on us. Yeah, exactly. He'll dunk on Dial Patrick Ewan and in. win... And, and, and stick his tongue at everyone. Yeah. That's how you get back. You snitching on fans. We're, and Greg Popovich, yo, stay on the bench, Greg Popovich, you old bag. The, what do we call it? It's the 6'9 generation, glorified Bro, rats. You know, that's kind of, it's what they, they're making it cool to, to rat. Dude, so. and you know what? I just, I'm sick of it. And and I saw this clip the other day. Someone sent me this clip. They wanted me to review it, but I'm not. I'm, I'm, like, I'm saving this for the pod, man. Greg Popovich really, and he's a weirdo. I never liked him as a coach anyway, but... You gotta tell the fans. A fan probably paid it, uh, a whole month's rent to go to a game, and you're gonna tell him, yeah. no, 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 don't, don't boo. Yeah, don't boo. Those are the guys that are paying your bills, buddy. Dude, I follow you know guys that I like. You know, I'm a Devils fan, Knicks fan, Yankees fan, Raiders fan. You know, I follow guys that are on the team. Yeah. So if they go to another team the next season, I unfollow them. You're yeah. not with me. Yeah. I'm. You're out. This this generation's lost it, man. I love when I'm in other arenas, and I, I obviously I get it probably the worst out of anybody, you know, probably worse than any of those guys. But I love it when the fans are chirping me. I'm like, at the end of the day, these guys are the are the reason I'm able to play sports and and make money. And they would kill to have you on yeah. their team. And you know what? Half the time, I like I've you can you can ask any of the fans how many times have I had these hilarious interactions with them, and we'll be yelling at each they other, love it. and then we run into each other sometime, and I'll be like, oh hey, how you guys doing? And it's respect. I, dude, they're dude. a fan. They can say whatever they want to Bro, me. When they I, make a good sign. They had signs up of me and Billy and when I was in bingo a couple weeks ago. They had clown noses on our pictures. And I had to tell the guy, I said, hey, I'm actually, like, I, I respect it. That's hilarious. But they actually used, like, one of my favorite photos of myself. So I was kind of like, I was like, oh, at least they used a good one, you know? Dude, when I, again, as a teenager running the trashers, I went to a few away games. You yeah. know how bad I got heckled? Oh, I bet, yeah. Bro, bad. But you know what? Like you said, I smile, I joke, and they respected it. We we, we would bullshit after, but nah, the, listen, 
it, 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 it's really, things have gotten really crazy. And, and look, at all you can do is, you know, when you're with your family and loved ones, teach them a different way. You can't be acting like that. It's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also on the flip side, because let's be fair. If you're a fan at the game, heckle people, but you don't have to go over the top. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So just, you know, there's there's a balance there. But, uh, man, it's uh, when I saw some of these clips people were sending me, yeah. guys snitching, stopping the free throw, uh, go to get security, that's insane, bro. Yeah. As we speak, just got a message back from Avery about the uh, about the video I sent him of the hit. So, Well, we're going to have to talk <laughs> about that. You, you, you can yeah. tell him we're talking about him literally live, live as we speak. Yeah. Shout out to Sean Avery, one of the greatest hockey players ever. My type of guy. And did you know Sean Avery came a few hours short from the trade deadline from being a Danbury trasher? Yeah, no way. Yeah. I didn't know that. We tried Amazing. to trade for him. He played in the lockout season for the most— Speak of the devil, Motor City Mechanics. They played wow. for Motor City, and we tried to get him. Uh, would have been a dream trasher. We probably all would have gotten arrested if he oh, was on yeah. the trashers. But he would have been a great combination with Winger. Sean Avery is what hockey is all about. When he was in his prime, that's my type of guy. So when I played um, my hold first— Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's yeah. shout out Club 93. Let's go back to our mood lighting here. Right. I'm in a better mood. I'm glad we got that off fact, our chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back. Like what are you feeling, blue? Off a little bit. I think I like blue. Royal or sky blue? Let's try, let's try sky blue. Maybe sky a little blue? more relaxed. Listen, hold on. Oh, that's whoa! I actually like that color. Club ninety three. Like that hey, that's Let's where the sponsorship it. money's wow. going. You Love know, that. when Unreal. I buy, you know, wow. See, Unreal. Um, I feel better now. You see the mood. Lighting. When I played in my first year pro, I remember I used. I just always played like just the most calm. I was a D man. I'd ask guys to fight, and I think I maybe have said this before. I don't know if it was on the podcast or not, but I played like a game. I go up to the heavyweights. Hey, you want to fight? Yes or no. And uh, I remember my coach uh, came up to me, shout out to Boom Boom, boom, uh, boom. coach of Columbus in the Fed. And uh, he came up to me, he's like, hey, man, uh, you want to go to the NHL? And I'm just like, at this point, I'm like, bro, that dream was dead when I was 12. Like, yeah. What do you mean? He's like, he's like, no, no, no I'm serious. Like, you start now, it's like 21. He's like, yeah, you. Ha there's a chance, dude. You just grind it out. Like, you can get there. I'm like, he's like, but uh, you're not going to be Bob Probert in the NHL. Yeah. And I was like, okay, like, you know, because mm. that was kind of like I, you know, played super respectful as a heavyweight. And he said, you need to be a Sean Avery or yeah. a Matt Cook or a Brad May. And I, and I, he's like, the only people that are scared of you on the ice are the fighters. Yeah. And I was, he's like, you know, just, uh, you know, yeah. you need to change your game a little bit. And, and ever since then, I kind of played a little bit more of a scary game. Those are game. the guys, man. And at the end of the day, and that's, you know, maybe I obviously overdid it a little bit because I, I've not only scared the players, I've scared the GMs and the, and the owners. Well, and you the, said it last the, episode. The whole, there's, the whole league, but, uh. Yeah, you, so you, you you said it last Shout episode. Out. There's there's no dimmers. There's no Amesbury dimmer. No, nah, you got an on switch and an off switch. There's no yeah. There's no dimmer. No, so. guys like Sean Avery. That was those are the guys. S but Ma such a fun guy who didn't Dude. love. Everybody's tuning in when that guy's on Everybody the ice. Everybody wants to watch yeah. a Sean Avery. You want yeah. him on your team. You hate him. Yeah, he's gonna jaw back with you. Yeah. He's gonna flip you off. He's gonna crack. He's got some good wise cracks too. Yeah. He'll crack on you, and you get so mad. Yeah. That he's the guy in the Duncan booth and at San the, Gennaro, right? At the end of the, yes, and yes. you want him, and yes. you want him on your team. You'll do anything for it. At the end of the day, too, like even the people that hate him are showing up to the games when he's in town. And I'm sure it's the same thing with me. Yeah. Every there's so many people in this league as fans that hate me, but I guarantee fucking t you, listen, they're showing up to the games listen, when I'm in town. Listen. Danbury trashes those two seasons. We were the highest gross visiting team, meaning wherever we went, Sales. the circus was coming. Yeah. And those teams had the best, you know, the, yeah. other than opening nights, like sellouts. So I think we're on to something here business wise. If we, so, you know, so, so, you XHL, know what? XHL. You know, listen, times may have changed and things have changed, but some, some things are just simple, stupid. The man. hunger for the old school game will always be there. And, and, I don't it, know, and it's man. more now than ever. More I don't know, man. Ever. We we may need a few more sponsors, but we we need something needs to be done, man. But uh, that might and, does that roll into yeah. next week's uh, mm. uh, the major announcement? Major announcement uh, next we'll, week. We'll, Should we'll, we save it? Yeah, we'll save it. All right, tonight? Not nah, not nah, later. No, like, next no, week. There's next something week. big coming though. There's something big. Really coming. big, big, big announcement. Big coming. But listen. We, we, there's a lot of, so, I mean, look, we, we, we had a lot of anger so far in this episode. So let's go to something that I think is something great. Light, let's lighter. go to something that I think is great. The professional women's hockey league. Yes, I agree. I follow we, tons of those girls on uh, social media. We, now. so for the first time ever, yeah. women, okay. Who have always had to play with boys growing yeah. up and they are getting their own pro hockey league. And I think it's starting, I think 2024. I think it's soon. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Well, they, they had a league. 
I think what happened was there was maybe a buyout or something, and they started a new league that's a little bit more. Truly dialed don't, in. truly don't but know. These, these girls are making dough too. Yeah, like it's not like these girls are getting taken advantage of. Like these girls are making a good portion of what they're bringing in as far as a uh, promotion. Listen, and, I think this is great, and we 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 always talk about the underdog. Yeah, yeah. These, you know, I went and looked at some of the comments on, uh, you know, some of the posts that the league's been putting out, and people clowning their jerseys, clowning it. Listen, man. Haters. I love, I haven't even seen a game. I love this professional women's league already. Yeah, yeah. There should too. be a bad girls. Can they hit? Bad girls of hockey? No, I don't think they're allowed to. See, I think they can, like, problem. they can play a little gritty. Like, they can rub each other see, out. That's and stuff. A see, listen, treat them, and they probably want to hit. I bet you they do, yeah. Listen, I I bet you those girls play harder than a lot of the guys listen, in listen, uh, in some of the and you, in our leagues. You're going to know sure. who I'm talking. When I got into boxing and uh, I started hanging, you know, not hanging around, but seeing in the gyms these female boxers, they go harder than the men. Yeah. Shout out to Steph Moss at Champs Boxing Club. Yeah. She has been sparring with predominantly men for yeah. all these years, and they don't go easy on her. They no. treat her just like everyone <laughs> no. else. And guess what? She will... Snuff you right she back. She bites. She bites, yeah. So, listen, I'm excited for this league. I mean, there's six teams, so they got their own original six. It's I, looking like New York, Boston, Minnesota, Ottawa. Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa. Yeah. Let the girls hit, man. Let I, them th hit. I think so. I think I'd love to hear what the girls think about I'd that, too. I'd love to know. You think Why you, shouldn't they be allowed I bet to you. I bet you most of them would want to. I'm not saying fighting, okay? Yeah. Please. We, we know where fighting's going yeah. with the men. So yeah. I'm not saying fighting. Yeah, yeah. But let them hit. I think they'd like to. Why wouldn't they? Listen- the the thing is, is it might it would be a little bit of a turnaround on them learning how to hit and like how to take a hit and stuff. But I, I mean, bet I you, think it'd you be great. I bet you, you poll that whole league anonymously. I bet you, you get eighty percent of the girls say, "Yeah, I want to." Let's yeah, hit. I think it'd be awesome. And either way, like why not? You, we've seen it with women's sports to begin with. Like for me, I do they always, wear a cage? They were full, yeah, cage, yeah, yeah even of more course, so. Yeah. So uh, women's sports in general, I've always noticed like. Girls, like you said, almost an underdog in sports, obviously. Yeah. And they play with bite. Like they always yeah. do. They got something to prove. They all have a chip That's on their why shoulder. I love it. And they played with the boys their whole life. If you watch women's soccer, mm -hmm. like I don't even like, uh, to be completely honest, I don't even like really watching men's soccer. Like I'll watch like World Cup and stuff like that. But I love watching girls pro soccer and girls uh, college soccer and stuff because these girls when they get knocked down they get up and they keep going you watch the men they get knocked down they stay down and try to draw a penalty well, they, these girls underdogs. are playing through shit they're grinding That's it out P PWHL I love it PWHL, PWHL. Let's, let's see it we're let's gonna go. cover we're we gonna, gonna get cover, some of these girls gonna, on the pod yeah, we're gonna cover it because it deserves coverage yeah. and I'm telling you right now man being a trasher I always say like it should be an adjective it's got nothing to do with being a hockey fighter right it's being gritty, an underdog. And these girls are underdogs, and I yeah. wish them the best, and I think it's going to be great. But let the girls hit, man. Yeah. I mean, it's like women's boxing. You know, they have different length of rounds. And a lot of these women are now like, nah, we want to go three-minute rounds yeah. like the men. Why not? Let the girls hit, man. Why not? I don't think they are I don't think they need their own special rules, especially, you know, nowadays, like, yeah. they don't want that. They don't no. want to be treated different. I don't think. Listen, Maybe they're wrong. going harder than, like we said, yeah. society as a whole. Let yeah, me tell yeah. you something. This, this might sound a little crazy to some old school people, and I consider myself old school, but yeah. if you want to build something, build around women, man. Yeah. Women are hungry. They're loyal. Yeah. They're, they don't get as distracted as guys. I try to build around guys, you know what I mean? And then guys get distracted. They yeah. go on Instagram and they see a broad and, and then they're all- They're gone. They're gone. Like, like no, go? like you got to- I, I, I cannot wait to see how the PWHL does. And I think the I New th York team is playing half a season they're in getting Bridgeport a, or something. They're getting a lot of press because I see it on my feed all the time. Like it's coming up on my, even the one, the pages I don't follow. I feel like you're seeing a lot of it. You're seeing the jerseys. People are talking about it. And also too, I think it's like old school guys and like obviously some yeah. guys that are probably jealous that these girls are better hockey players yeah. than them. Yeah. They have something to say about it, which it makes it even grow faster because everybody's talking about it and you got the guys that don't want it and the, and the people that do, and they're all kind of talking about it. But I, I mean, I want to hear the opinion from, from, from them themselves. Like let the girls, what do you say? Let, let the, the girls, girls hit. let the girls rock. And it's not just about hitting. Yeah. Let them be gritty. Let them go out yeah. and do the thing. Well, they do. We, we know they play with grit. Like they play hard. Like they I play. can't wait to see it. Yeah. I really can't. Looking forward and, to it. Um, yeah, man. Women's you, pro listen, hockey. Listen, let's, let's, let's get it, man. The bad girls of hockey. I like yeah, it. I uh, like it, yeah. So, listen. We might have to do a, uh, you know, bring them in. 
Let's one of do them. it. We gotta Let's pick bring we gotta them find in. The grittiest player. Who's the grittiest the women? Who, and, Question who, for our following: Who is the grittiest player in the PWHL? Let's go. Bring them we in. We need it. Put expenses, it in the comments. Expenses paid. We'll, we'll bring you Put out it here. In the Let's comments. Talk. We want to hear it. We want to hear from her. And uh, yeah, yeah we're on board. We're on I, board. I love it, man. Yeah. So listen, we, um, you know, this. Every episode has been growing. This is only our fifth, and every episode seems to just grow and grow and grow. And um, we're getting a lot of interaction now with fans, like a lot of questions, a lot of people, questions for you, questions for me, questions for both of us. So I figured, why not end our show with some questions, uh, episode five. And um, listen, I got a question here on Instagram, at Hattie's Baby. Okay, this is for you, Amesy. What was your hardest fight in the Federal League so far? None. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Schmitty? No. Um, sorry, Schmitty. I'm really sorry. Uh, Schultz, I guess. I always. Schultz it's always boy. tall guys. Honestly, for me, it's like always tall guys. It's, it's just. It's just. It's, it's just matchups. tall guys. It, it, it makes me work a little harder. Um, it's it's the tall guys, man. Straight up. It always has been for me. It's it's like, you know, because we've talked about it. Uh, you're, you're a heavyweight as far as I'm concerned, but you're shorter. Yeah. And yeah. In terms of what people think the prototypical heavyweight fighter in hockey is, you're a well, little shorter. Yeah. So a taller guy, it's, it's natural, that reach, that it's just an awkward, it's an awkward thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, had to be Schultz. I'd say he's a he's yeah. a he's in the tough he's guy. In American League now, coast. No, or no, something? he's in the coast. Yeah, he's in the coast. Next question on Instagram to us, and this is from at Caleb. Hey, ten, I think. Sorry, Caleb. We're gonna put you. We're gonna put you down there. But this is actually to me. If you could do it all over again, what is one thing you would change about the Trashers? Literally nothing. Uh, literally <laughs> nothing. Yes. But but um, I will say there are there is one regret that always comes to mind is going into the second season. Okay, it was probably at the time one of the toughest parts of my job is okay. So the UHL that we were in had a rule: you could only have so many veteran players, and a vet was I think described as someone with a hundred pro games or more, or something like that. So. You had you were mandated to have so many rookies on right. your roster, vets. Well, what was happening was after the first season, even though we were at the threshold for veterans, a lot of guys turned to veterans. So now it's like, damn, you had to make some hard decisions. Everybody basically wanted to come back. I think the one regret I had is our one of our captains from the first year, Bruce Richardson. You talk about a guy who can do everything, little guy, score, fight, heart and soul of the team. For some reason, we just couldn't, and it's it's crazy how we just couldn't find a way. I and mean, he had some offers to play in Europe, and um, for some reason or another, we just couldn't come to terms. And I think that really, that's one regret I always think about, because everyone asks about regrets, and Bruce Richardson, who's a big-time coach right now, um, and his son, who Where I is remember. He coaching? God, you know? it's a sin that I is don't know. Is he in know. North America or is he in ah, God, I don't know if he's in England or North America. Um, we'll have to look it up. But um, Bruce Richardson, man, that's a regret I have, not finding a way to bring him back because he was really a big-time leader, guy you want in the locker room. And his son's a big-time player right now. I think he's still a junior player, but um, – he was a big, his son's a big time player. And I remember when he was a little kid. So shout out to Richie. I used to love Bruce and, and that's probably the one regret. And you know what? I think my dad agrees with that. He, he asks about Bruce all the time if we talk to him and this and that. So shout out Bruce Richardson. I would say that's probably a regret for sure. Q, he's in the queue. Oh, so he's playing. Okay. Junior. Yeah. Blaine, and I think Blainville, he's. Okay. I believe. And his son, God, what's his son's name? Blake, maybe? Good player too. This next question from Instagram at J Kelly Lax to you, Mr. Diamond Hands. Will Amesbury uh, ever Josh. play lacrosse again? Josh is my boy. I used oh yeah, to, yeah. I uh, I taught him. Well, we did some. I coached him a little bit in his fighting. He fights a little bit. He plays in the WLA. Okay. Um. Yeah. Good little. What's kid, the WLA? Good kid. Western Lacrosse okay. Association. Yeah. That's gotta be a tough league, huh? Uh, it was. Okay. Before I left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not much good to say about the WLA, oh, but uh, but uh, Kelly, shout out, um, 
So what did he ask? How He wh- wants where? to know if you will ever play lacrosse again. So I'm going to keep that under my hat right now. There yeah. might be some, you never know. There might be some conversations floating around. You could see something sooner than later. I think maybe this suspension might play a little part in, uh, in listen, uh, me playing some lacrosse. But uh, let's just say the phone's ringing pretty consistently. Oh, I know it. And, and, and honestly, I never paid attention to lacrosse till you moved to Danbury and yeah. you kind of put me on to lacrosse. And right. I love it. Yeah. I, man, if I would have known about box lacrosse went back in the day, yeah. I might have played lacrosse instead of hockey. Yeah. I love lacrosse. I mean, we were, we're watching some of these clips. It's uh, these guys are these guys are tough. Man. Box lacrosse is still pretty old school. Like you can't you can't really clean like you can't really take like if you're a goal scorer in box lacrosse, you, you're still tough. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of soft players in hockey now that are that are you know they're yeah. skilled, but they're kind of soft. But yeah. in in lacrosse, you're getting slashed. Yeah, so it's like no matter what, you have to be willing to get slashed because it's part of the game. So yeah. shout out to box lacrosse. That's the Canadian version of lacrosse. Uh, we obviously play field as well, but. Um, box lacrosse would be the National Lacrosse League uh, and the Canadian Lacrosse Association. Canadian, Canadian Cross. I want to go to a. Bo- There's a professional league, box lacrosse in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I know. I know. I want to go. I, I want to go to a game. I know tons of players in the NLL. I know owners. I know um, GMs. I know coaches. Um, Dude, yeah, I want to go. Want to go to a game? I want to go to a box lacrosse. The games game. are on Saturdays. Uh, I'm suspended, so let's set it up. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got. Maybe a, after the holidays, I got time. we can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Definitely. Um, we got, um, yeah, there's teams, New York Riptide, mm. um, Buffalo, there's, there's teams all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, I'm interested. My, I want to go to lacrosse. I, I, like might, lacrosse. I might be playing in one of the games. You well, never, we'll you never see. know. But we'll no, see. I'm just kidding. Just, just, hey, don't. just kidding. Allegedly. Am I? Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly, you never know. Allegedly the phone's ringing. Allegedly yeah. it's let's not. Let's just say, I, let's just say I, I wasn't able to take a call up last season. <laughs> so, uh, next I quest- did play my first professional box lacrosse game last season though. When I, oh, that's right. You played in, um, in, Bing, in Binghamton. Binghamton, right? So I made my professional debut in uh, lacrosse last season yeah. while I was suspended. So let's just say there's something that happens when I get suspended yeah. that involves lacrosse. So I don't know. Maybe I, I'm going to keep that one under my hat. But hey. Jay Kelly would know probably better <laughs> than most. Next question on Instagram from Jag141. Is the both of us Marvel or DC comic books? I'm going Marvel. I'm going DC, man. Who's your superhero? I don't know. Fuck. I'm not a big Bro, Batman, guy. listen. This is another thing. Batman is the best. And, and listen, I'm, I want all these comic book people to come at me. Batman is the best, and I'm going to tell you why. He's not, he's just a regular guy, okay? He is a regular guy, Batman. And it's just like boxing, right? Don't you judge someone on their opposition, okay? Who fights better opposition than Batman? Joker? Penguin? Riddler, true. Honestly, Mr. Freeze, Catwoman, he's You're playing right. grab ass with her one day, yeah. and then he's against her. Yeah. Mr. Freeze, I mentioned that, Poison Ivy. So I judge people based on their competition yeah, in boxing. Yeah, true. Batman, who faces better competition than Batman? Yeah, you might be right. I like, personally, I like Iron Man, but I would say top two in each. I, I got to go Iron Man and then and Batman. Batman... And uh, shout out to, once again, my boy Adrian. We've had wars over this because he's a Superman guy. And to me, Superman. Nah, Superman's too, like, proper. Superman. Like, his hair's parted. Yeah, and Superman know? hasn't. What is he? What adversity has he been through? No, he's, he's and got people, it too And I know good. what people are going to say. Batman's Bruce Wayne. He was born rich, all this. Who cares? My guy came from the trenches. He's he still lost his parents. Yeah. He had to learn all those martial arts. Yeah. Batman has fought the best. Please, please, people, comment who. Who the hell in comic book land has fought better competition than Batman? You can't name one. He has the most adversary adversaries, and every one is like you would say nails. Yeah. Joker, friggin' uh, Penguin, everyone. That's you can't true. Riddler. I like it. Batman's number one. Yeah. Jag one That's four old one. School. All right. Next question from Instagram. Uh, this is from Cliche Twenty One. And this is to both of us as well as fathers. What's the most important thing you want? your children to take away from life. So you got three kids. I got one. I got four kids. That's right. You have four kids. I, four I kids. have one. Yeah. Um, that's a loaded question. Cliche. I mean, I, I would, I would say, man, it's all a balance, right? Like I would want my son, Dominic to, to definitely be a little old school. Yeah. Um, know those old school values that was instilled from me from birth, basically. Um, 
And I don't know. I I, I want him to, I want him to to. You know what's weird? Is it is it weird to say I don't want him to be like me at all? Like no. I feel like I, I feel like. You want him to create his own path. I, I want him to be way better than me because yeah. I got my own stuff. And I, I feel like he has the potential to be way better than me already. You know yeah. what I mean? And I just want my son to be a kind kid. Um, I want him to be old school, you know, old school values. I want him to um, be a stand up guy. But I want him. I don't want him. You know, my dad grew up from nothing. Dirt, you know, a lot of lot of chaos. I didn't grow up from dirt, but I was around a lot of chaos. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Um, gritty stuff. I don't want him to be involved with like, like I don't want him to be in boxing or, yeah. or, or the garbage business or yeah. any. Like I want him to kind of like you know do his thing. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I, I I got a little soft when he was born. I never thought. I never thought it would happen. But I just would want him to Wait just be have kinda, a girl. Oh no. <laughs> Big trouble. So Big trouble. I'm I'm kind of on the same kind of page. My thing is like everything I'm doing right now is is because of my kids, especially my oldest kid. It was you know how can I influence my kids um, in a way that you know they're going to do something. I just want them to be passionate about whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want them just taking the job that make that's comfortable and safe. And I want my kids to be passionate about what they're doing. I want them to do what they love. If what they love pays them $50,000 a year and they're actually passionate about it. I don't care. Yeah. But obviously, you know, it's whatever they love. I want them to do that. I want them to be passionate about it. That's why I'm chasing my dreams right now. Don't set a limit on what you think you're capable of. Don't listen to all the people that say you can't do this. You can't do that. Cause I heard that my whole entire life. And until I decided I can do whatever I want and whatever I believe in, then, you know, that's kind of what it is. So I think for me, it's just, yeah, I want my kids to have the good care, my best characteristics and my, and like, you know, not pick up my worst ones, obviously, but really just be passionate and chase your dreams and don't let anybody else limit your beliefs yeah. because whatever you believe in, and this goes for everybody, if you truly believe in it and you have faith it can and it will happen as mm -hmm. long as you believe in it and you match it with hard work. And I just want my kids to know that and to see that through what everything like me and you have been doing, yeah. like we're dream chasing right now. We're, yeah. going, we're going for it. You know what I mean? Like we're making sacrifices and we're, you know, putting things on hold in order to do this thing that we see the big picture and where we want to go. And, and it's just, we're passionate about it. And that's why it's going that way. And, yeah. and we know it's going to pan out because we both believe and we both have faith. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta grind, be humble, be loyal. That's, um, you know, I think a lot of stuff is genetics. I think both of our kids are good genetic wise with a lot of that humbleness, loyalness, but you gotta, you gotta teach them. Um, yeah. Next question from, I don't know if you've ever met this guy, my boy from the five for fighting podcast, Alec, my boy, Alec Olinsonland. I think, I, Alec, I think I bought your last name, but this is my guy. He was, even before the doc, he reached out to me. I did his podcast. Such a cool guy. He, he's he's a friend for sure. And he wrote to me, if the Danbury Trashers inaugural season were to take place today, who is the first tough guy you would try to sign on the roster? Can't say Amesbury. That's too obvious. Well, you, you really cut me at the legs there, Alec. I mean, it would definitely be diamond hands. But if I had to, it's a kid playing in the coast right now, Nico Blackman. Nice. I like him. Yeah. Love for Danbury to get him. You two yeah. would be a one-two punch. I mean, maybe not in this league, but Nico Blackman is a guy that I'm seeing a lot, and yeah. I could tell he's like he he's plays like, with energy. He's I like a, watching. Us I, stuff. I I mean, he is uh, he's a dog. He'd and for he, sure be getting 18 gamers if he played. In the oh fan. yeah, Nico, Nico. Thank God he's in the coast. Yeah. You know, legitimate. <laughs> Um, other guys, I know I just asked one, but you know, our, our buddy, Justice Smoke. Yeah, uh, he's a beauty. Too. King of the, a couple King of the Rink guys that, that we discovered rink, and, yeah. um, you know, Justice Smoke, Braden Boschman. Bosher. Bosh filthy. If you Let's don't know who go. Braden Boschman is, we're going to have to drop some links to some he's of his like, fights. He's, he's a good kid too. Like he's I, really, a I kid, talk to him pretty regularly. Now you got to remember, a trasher, not just someone who's tough. He's got to have some personality. He's, He's got to be a dog. He's Braden fun. Bosch, filthy Bosch, and that's my guy. Yeah. And honestly, the way the game's played today, you need a steady, stay-at-home defenseman who could play, lay hits, and 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 Bo Cornell, another king of the I like ring it. guy. I like Bo. He's got big hits too. Tough kid can play. So yeah. uh, 
Shout out to those guys. I'm going to answer that same question. I would have started out, you know, I think Boschman's definitely top of the list if, if, if I was involved in that decision. And then uh, Anthony Collins plays in the coast as oh, well. Oh, I've heard of him Collins too. Collins is a beauty. I actually played, we actually played junior together. Imagine me and him as a one-two punch in our junior <laughs> league back when hockey was I've heard nails. of Collins. I've seen that before. Collie's a, a tough cat. And uh, I would have to throw him on that list. Uh, him yeah. and Boschman for sure. Yeah, would be my top two. Yeah, other than myself for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sign myself? You got. Hey, listen, yeah. why not? Yeah. You know, those people who sign themselves. Well, so if why we not? Had, if we had uh, those guys on the team, I probably wouldn't need to fight. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that depth chart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Save your hands. Yeah. Next question from Facebook: Dustin Larock, and Dustin writes to me. Oh, let me pull it up here again. Not a professional here. He wrote, who was your favorite character and moment from the Mighty Ducks trilogy? Um, and did you like the Mighty Ducks as an NHL team as well? No, I don't care about the Mighty Ducks as an NHL team. I'm a devil. Uh, New Jersey Devils all the way. Um, the Bash Brothers, right? Obviously. It's got to be the Bash Brothers. I just, I just seen a clip the other day. Someone sent me on Instagram of the Bash Brothers when they when they have the USA jerseys. Yeah, and they and put the bandanas running. on. Remember and when they go across the bench, punch everybody across the head, and they're yelling at them, chirping the fans. Oh, man, the Bash Brothers. That I feel like that's too easy. If I had to go after the Bash Brothers, okay, I'm going to throw a wild card at you. And I actually met him. He's a fan of the Trashers. Averman, remember Averman, the guy with the fro and the glasses. Right, right, right. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to my boy Averman, real nice. name Matt Doherty. That's my boy. Shout out nice. to Averman. He's still pretty. Isn't he active still yeah. as an actor and stuff? I think so. He's yeah. done stuff, man. He's a, he's a good, still good, around. good dude. Good, but honestly, that's like the foundation. How many kids yeah. started playing hockey because of that movie? Well, I know in America, in the yeah, Northeast, where I come from, hundred yeah. percent. Most you people. You got to give that movie a lot of credit for the game of hockey and its growth. And they made an NHL team after him. And the timing of it and stuff. I think you got to give credit to whoever was involved in that. I don't know if the NHL had any involvement in that, but that was a great smart. move by the game of hockey. Smart. Great Very move. smart. Yeah. And uh, we're winding down here. We got another question on Facebook. Jake Lagrone. Lagrone. AJ and Mr. Diamond Hands. Mr. Diamond Mr. Hands. Very wow. formal. Sounds I like, like how the league talks to me. AJ and Mr. Diamond Hands. <laughs> Who's your favorite player all time and why? Any league, any era. Thanks. Listen. I always go back to this guy because it was the first hockey game I ever went to. New Jersey Devils, Scott Stevens. Stevens, he a was. Boss. I mean, he would lay hits on guys again. New Jersey Devil too. Oh man, my first game I ever went to ninety three. My dad took me to Devil game. Thank God he took me. I mean, if he took me to Madison Square Garden, I would have been a Rangers loser fan. Ranger fan yeah, right yeah. now. It's so, really a tough go. So so Scott Stevens, I'd have to say. So I actually have the at home one of the first jerseys I ever bought with my own money was a Scott Stevens. The, remember the uh, remember the New Jersey Devils the green and red oh, jerseys. Oh, I love those ones. So yeah. that was one of the first jerseys I ever bought with my own money. It was a Scott Stevens. I love Stevens. He's uh, great. Just he axed people, dude. That center ice. He would literally get kicked out of the league so <laughs> fast if he was still playing. Man, um, he was just he's the yeah, man. a beast, dude, a killer. Man. Um, but I obviously I gotta go first person that always pops in my head is Probert, Bob Probert. Uh, he is the Wayne Gretzky of tough guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I still firmly believe if you're a tough guy, you don't wear the number 24. It should be, it should be, if you can wear, un, it should be an unsaid An unwritten thing. rule. Unwritten I think, rule. I think it's like wearing number 99. Yeah. I always get a, a little chuckle out of it and I'm sorry to anybody. I think last time I said this, I felt bad because I went and seen one of my buddies was wearing it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, unwritten I, rule. I always get a little chuckle. I think it, if it's not officially an unwritten rule, if you listen to this podcast, it should be. Let's hang up number 24 for yes. tough guys. Uh, I don't think that's appropriate. I think if you're a tough guy, put some respect on Bob Probert's name and let's leave the number 24 for other players. On the I, team. I, I couldn't agree more with that. And the last question from at Simon Levy is a jinx. One, two, three. Shout out Simon <laughs> Levy. Simon. Are you guys on Cameo? We, and yeah. this is perfect because, yes, I am on Cameo uh, since the doc. But you recently, Mr. Yeah, Diamond I Hands. just got on Cameo recently. I've done my first couple uh, gigs on there. Um, no foot fetishes, though. <laughs> Stay out of those. <laughs> so you... um. I think you said, did you break up with a girl for someone or something? Or no, but I but that's something that I offer on Cameo. If if, if there's any <laughs> girls out there that want to, you know, they're having a tough time. Maybe they, her boyfriend cheated on her. 
I'll, yeah. I'll break the news to him when you're ready to leave. Just let me know. I, I feel like I'm good. If you want me to be gentle about it, I think I can be gentle. If you want me to be a little cutthroat, I can be a little cutthroat. But not that I have a very big female following on Instagram. I don't do enough topless topless pics. But uh, yeah. but uh, not that that would help. Um, <laughs> but definitely that is uh, something that my cameo is directed towards. You want me to break up with your boyfriend for you? That's uh, right. Listen, up my what a Christmas gift! A Diamond Hands cameo. Yes. Um. Hey, Merry I, Christmas, you filthy animal. Hey, exactly. I see what you're doing with that, too. Hey. And listen, I don't know if we could do this, but we could probably do offer a dual cameo together. Because yes, I'm on yeah, cameo. Yeah, yeah. On, either, pre- on either profile. Yeah, like I'm, I'm pretty cheap. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to charge someone yeah. crazy. I'm not that serious. Yeah. I know you're, you're affordable, yeah. but we should do a joint yes. uh, package. Yeah, hit yeah. us up or email us or hit yeah. us up on it. We'll, we'll make special uh, yeah, arrangements. Yeah. And, and if you uh, want us to like sing a song, it might be a little bit elevated prices, but we'll do it. I listen, mean, I'll, I, I'll do it. I, yeah. I don't care, man. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I'll get um, after. You know, and happy uh, birthday, maybe. <laughs> so bells. definitely, definitely, uh, definitely a cool cool holiday gift hit us up on cameo yeah. and uh listen we're wrapping up here but I, I gotta give a major shout out to one of the biggest danbury hockey fans i know dave torres um got it's such an honor uh, it's when i see people tattoo like i don't have any tattoos yeah, yeah. i don't like needles. is that uh ch- no what's his uh so handle, eric was he Eric is a tattoo artist. Is that Chapman? Chapman? Yes. Okay, right, so, right, right. So shout out, uh, my buddy Dave Torres uh, came to Champs Boxing Club, my gym, and he told me, hey, I'm getting a trasher tattoo. And, oh, uh, right. right. Okay, and, okay. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, man, yeah. that's awesome. Send me a picture of it. Amazing. He sent me a picture within a day. His he forearm. He basically got two tattoos. He got the he got Scrappy the trash can and then the DT. Yeah, yeah, And um, Big shout out to Danbury tattooist, uh, tattooist, Eric tattoo Chapman, artist, tattoo Eric artist. Chapman. He's a great, actually, you know, what's funny is like, uh, we always look like we're always, you know, we just moved here. We're looking yeah. for, I wouldn't mind a good tattoo artist. Like, well, Eric's the uh, guy, My boy man. back home is my tattoo artist, but, but Eric, I've been actually looking, I actually found him recently. He's, He's got good real. work. I seen someone the other day with some nice tattoos, uh, when we were at the mall and yeah. I actually asked her where she got her work done yeah. and it was Eric Chapman. And then now full circle, here we go. He's doing this trashers tattoo. One of the coolest tattoos I've seen. It was clean because the trash great, logo great is pretty detailed yeah and he it look it looked like it, it's crazy man he did shout out to eric chapman shout out to dave Torres. it's it's so humbling when people send me tattoos of the trasher logo it's 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 pretty wild to me i had a guy send me one on his head um which was pretty wild as well and uh so big shout out dave torres big shout out eric chapman and uh listen man next week we got, uh, this is the first time at the end of an episode we tease next week. Yeah. Next week, December 17th, I think we got something fun. Yeah. Uh, Are you we know, talking? Uh, well, we got two things. Cheese pizzas? Yeah, cheese pizzas. Yeah. And, uh, a large one? Just for you. You know what? Let's get a large cheese pizza. What, what I'm really curious about, you know, I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. Who gets it worse? So listen. We're in the holiday spirit here. To me, if you were born in the late 80s like I was, or even the early 90s, Home Alone is the Christmas movie. Marv, I've yes. reached the top. <laughs> Harry. Harry. Harry, I've reached the top. I've reached the top. Who gets it worse, though? I've, I've, so this is why, I, this, see, we, we got so much we could accomplish with this podcast, but one of the things I'm most excited about is this debate, because I've had this debate for no reason, off record, off pod, for most of my life. Every, at the end of Thanksgiving, every year, is when Home Alone 1 goes on, and we watch 1 and 2, anything after Home Alone 2 doesn't count, Home yeah. Alone 1 and 2 yeah. to Christmas. Those are the OG Home The Alone. greatest Christmas movies ever, probably. Up there with, uh, okay, so I would say top two for sure, and yeah. then right behind it, you gotta go Christmas Vacation. Home Alone, you know what I mean. Home Alone, Home Alone one, and two. one and two, and then Home Christmas Alone Vacation number three. For whatever, me, for me, for whatever. Me. Home yeah. Alone one and two. There is nothing <laughs> after. But anyway, long story short, a few years back, I started talking to a friend, and we're talking about Home Alone, and we, you know, Marvin Harry. Shout out to the Sticky Bandits, aka the Wet Bandits. The Wet Bandits, um, yeah. Wet Bandits, aka Sticky Bandits. They yes, became Sticky Bandits. Right. Shout out to Marvin Harry. There's some trashers too. They don't give up no matter what. They're they go through persistent. it, They're, and that's what being a trash is all about. Yeah. Shout out to Marvin Harry, and I've always we've always debated like who got it worse because you know Kevin sets all these traps. Yeah, and it's it's unreal. There's a there's less, and 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 I've this is I am so excited for this episode because yeah. we are going to debate 
Every trap in Home Alone 1 and 2 and who got it worse in each movie, Marv or Harry. I already know my answer. Yeah. But we're going to save it for next week. While we, we eat a large while cheese we eat a pizza. large cheese pizza just for us. Yes. And um yeah, we are going to discuss Home Alone. This is Christmas time, okay? We can put hockey and sports to the side. This is a little more important. Okay? And also next week as a Christmas gift to all our fans, we have a major announcement. That's Do all we? I can say. Do we? It's it's a major announcement. Major. And major. you're going to have to say to major. Very important. Very, part of the announcement is that it's major. It's major announcement. And I'm not going to laugh. Oh, I thought you, you were going to go a little farther there. I was like, it's Ooh. a major announcement. A major. We have a fun announcement. It's it's for real. And this is going to be a nice little Christmas gift. For, Couldn't be better time. For our audience. For a, for probably the bulk of our audience is going to be a nice little Christmas and, gift. And hockey. Well, never mind. <sighs> I'm sorry. You 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 like my sister. You can't sorry. just let. I got it, excited. You, you can't. You gotta let it okay. simmer a little. You're right. You're you're, right. you're busting at the seams. Okay, okay, sorry. You're gonna get suspended another two games, right, man. You're Relax. Right. You're right. <laughs> Listen, guys. This is a great episode. Episode five. We can't thank you guys for the support. Remember, hit us up. Hit our Gmail up. Hit us on DM. Hit us up on Cameo. Like, subscribe. Remember, we're the Fourth Line Boys, the pod for the people, and we appreciate you guys. Remember, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everywhere. I mean, like, wherever you get podcasts. Subscribe and make sure you share. And uh, let's grow and this talk, thing together. And talk trash to us, yeah, okay? Because because you know uh, we did a lot of Q and A's today, and it was nice stuff. Mm-hmm. I want to do the next time a Q and A, just criticism. I want to hear someone mouth me off. Yes. Actually, I've seen a lot of people mouth me off, but no one's coming to my page. Nah, to do it. that's not gonna get happen. on my page and do it. Yeah. But we wanna we wanna maybe maybe you know instead of two minutes in about maybe yeah. a five minute major just yeah. five minutes of just roasting us yes definitely. so come at it it's all good yeah. guys thank you talking trash podcast we'll see you guys soon thank you.